Christian has the Holy Spirit and reverence our King. He is consistent in who is God. Just worship Him.
bless you. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, everyone. Those of you on Instagram, those on Facebook, God bless you. Thank you for being part of what God is doing here today. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you so much for joining us. I just want us to lift up our voice and begin to bless the name of the Lord. I want you to thank the Lord for today is day 24. It has been God all the way. It has been his mercies. It has been his kindness. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Begin to say, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what you are doing in our midst. Father, we worship you. King of glory, we exalt you. We say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody lift up your voice begin to bless the lord begin to thank him begin to exalt him begin to tell him father we are grateful we thank you for what you are doing we thank you for what you have done we thank you for what you are going to do even tonight in the name of jesus somebody lift up your voice before heaven and begin to speak to the lord say lord we bless your name we thank you we thank you for great is your mercies and great is your faithfulness father we thank you for this six p.m. prayer watch and we thank you for calling us in your presence and you're saying thirst no more father we thank you for counting us worthy as those whom you are filling up even this hour in the name of jesus spirit of the living god we invite you to take over take preeminence take over everything that we are about to do right now in the name of jesus so shall it be in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen welcome welcome those of you that are joining us now i shout out to every one of us hallelujah amen glory to god how are you doing i trust god that every one of us is doing great amen hallelujah today is whoa god has been faithful day 24 how did we get here i don't know but i know god knows amen Praise God, praise God, praise God. Please share, please invite somebody. Let them come in and join us. Hallelujah. Remember at 12 o'clock, we looked at how not to thirst. We looked at characteristics of an intercessor. We looked at what is God saying, what is expected of us. We looked at how Samson cried out to God. Hallelujah. What did God do? God answered him. Amen. So we looked at prayer as a weapon, as an instrument for you and I not to thirst anymore. Amen. When you seek the face of God, God hears. The Bible says he became very thirsty. He wasn't just thirsty, but he was very thirsty. And what did he do? He cried out to God. Amen. And what did he do? He reminded God of his former promises. Praise God. He reminded God, Father, this is what you have done in the past. Father, do it again. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to remind God, Father, this is what you have done in the past. I want you, Lord, to do it again. Hallelujah. And what did God do? God did it again. Amen. So our God is a God of multiple chances. Our God is a God that does countless miracles. He's not the God that the miracle he did today, tomorrow he will say, I did one for you yesterday. I will not do another one today. No. Hallelujah. Child of God, why are we seeking the face of the Lord? Why are we saying we will test no more? Because in this season, God is looking for his instruments. And many times we look at why do people thirst? They thirst because they do not know how to engage in the things of the spirit. When you learn to engage in the things of the spirit, child of God, I'm here to tell you that you will never be thirsty. Because number one, when you engage in prayer, when you engage in intercession, hallelujah, when you engage in fasting, when you engage in, in, in giving arms, in supporting people, child of God, you realize that the things that other people thirst after, you will not thirst after it. Because why? God has given you and I things that would cause us not to thirst. The Bible says that when Samson cried out to the Lord in Judges chapter 15, verse 14 to 16, he cried out to God and said, You have given this great deliverance by, your, by the hand of your servant. Now shall I die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? So God split the hollow place that is in Lehi, and water came out, and he drank. 
and his spirit returned and he revived so you see for us as spiritual beings, there are things that you and I, when we engage in, what happens to us is that we are number one, fed. Number two, our spirit man is revived. Hallelujah. Our spirit man returns. So you have to look, you know, when we're talking about thirst, we're not talking about physical thirst. You know, Jesus said in his word, come buy, come and eat without paying money come why buy food that does not feel hallelujah so many times you see that some of the thirst that we have is because we are not engaging in spiritual things that quench every thirst amen so we looked at number one intercession we looked at intercession standing in the gap we looked at prayer that was the first thing we looked at because samson cried out to the lord and crying out is the same thing as praying and how did we look at prayer we looked at number one praying your prayer time your quiet time that is a very important time in prayer you talk to god god talks back to you we've seen many people that when they cried out to god god heard them we looked at prayer of agreement where two or three shall gather together in my name or agree concerning anything it shall be done by my father sometimes if you struggle in the place of quiet time spending time alone with god to pray you may need to engage somebody to jump start you to support you to help you in the place of prayer that's also what this prayer jumpstart book can do number three intercession you don't want to be thirsty you know many times some people say i don't know how to pray i don't know what to pray for i tell them go and buy a globe go and buy a world map when you open the world map pick up one country one nation a day you will never lack what to pray so these things are what stops us from being dry amen Samson had physical thirst, but there are many believers that are very thirsty spiritually. They are thirsty. They don't know how to be filled. And this is what the Lord is teaching us today. Thirst no more. How can I not thirst? Prayer. How can I not thirst? Intercession. How do I pray different methods of prayer? We should, we, we understood that today. And then we look at another weapon hallelujah we looked at what makes an intercessor and we looked at number one there must be people that have the heart of love if you can't love you can't pray if you can't love a nation where you are not even related to anybody there you go there for the sake of jesus christ and his word and his power to see the captives being set free it is love that drives missionaries to nations it is love that drives missionaries or people of god to go out there and win souls soul winning is the principle thing god has called us that is why we put prayer in place some people may say oh why are you praying this much let me tell you there are nations that are not saved this is what we do as intercessors we don't just jump out to the crusade ground we prepare ourselves in the place of prayer any greatness any great man any great woman whoever that you have seen that has accomplished things that last a lifetime hallelujah they are people that engage in prayer you can see that Samson called the place En Hakore, which is in Lehi to this day. When you see men and women that engage in prayer, they are people that, that receive generational blessing. They are not confused about what God is saying to them. They are not confused about what God is doing. They are not confused about who God has called. They are not confused about what God is saying per time. Hallelujah. So these are ways you, your life can permanently be a life where you are not thirsting where you are not short of information you know there are some people that every now and then they are short-circuited they are short-circuited in hearing god they are short-circuited in in dreams they are short-circuited in the study of the word of god they are even short-circuited in the place of prayer when they come into the place of prayer they are dry why because these things are not a permanent characteristics of their life somebody shout hallelujah so what do you do as inter as an intercessor you touch heaven for others Amen. Or Jesus said to Peter that when thou art strengthened, strengthen your, your brethren. Hallelujah. When you are strengthened, strengthen your brethren. That means that when you are revived, revive others. 
Praise God. So when we engage in intercession, we are standing in the gap for other people so that when they are strengthened, they too will strengthen others. You see, the call of God on our lives is like a button. Hallelujah. This is my speaker. You see this button? I am saved. I preach the gospel to you. You are saved. You take this same gospel, pass it to the next person. They are saved. You go to a nation. You preach the gospel. 100 people are saved. Those 100 go and they multiply 10,000, 20,000, 100,000. That is our principal purpose on earth. Every time you see a soul winner, you see someone that is full of it. I don't know about you, but nothing gives me joy than seeing a soul come to Jesus. Nothing gives me joy like going to nations where they've never heard about Jesus and preaching Christ and see the Lord Jesus himself perform diverse of miracles. Let me tell you, it is an experience every believer must have. An experience of watching people. You say, do you want to give your life to Christ? They begin to come. You see people giving testimony. I was healed of blindness. I was Because anywhere the gospel is being preached, healing, miracles, signs, and wonders they are automatic it's not something that anybody should feel so i'm a superman because i and god uses me to do miracles miracles are our, our children's bread every born again child of god every born again faith believing child of god ought to perform miracles because it is in the name of jesus it is the power god has given us it is a, it is a signet ring god has given us to go all over the world preach the gospel heal the sick this should be a normal for every believer somebody bless the name of the lord so when the word of god says thirst no more you must ask yourself what will i do not to thirst anymore we have looked at prayer personal prayer intercession when you intercede for others what do you do you are allowing yourself to be filled up when you stand in the gap for others when you when you pray and lift up others instead of yourself child of god you can never be thirsty you can never be thirsty for miracles. You can never be thirsty for issues. You can never ever be thirsty. Just recently, somebody just sent me a message. There's something she they are going through right now. I picked it. I picked it up in prayer and I started praying. It gives me joy because I know that this challenge that I have part and I have taking myself to join and pray, it would come back with testimony. How can I be thirsty? When I stand in the gap and pray alongside with people, how can I be feel full of worry when I'm also standing in the gap for others? These are things that stop you from being thirsty. When you engage in spiritual matters, what happens is that God begins to fill you up. Hallelujah. So another way that you can stop being thirsty is by fasting. Hallelujah. Child of God, I was speaking to one of my dearest sister, you know, and she was like, Sis, for the past six months, it's been encounter after encounter after encounter after encounter. And I said to her, you know, there were so many things we were talking. I said, there's one of the things I thank God. I don't know about others, but I thank God how I got saved. Because I know it's very important. I thank God I was saved back in Nigeria. I thank God I was saved in deeper life. I thank God that I saw God in a different, deep way. Because a lot of things we see right now, if you're found, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Your foundation, how you gave your life to Christ, how you came to know the Savior, how, you know, when I was growing up, we sit in church for three hours. We don't stand up just listening to the word because we came hungry to learn God's word. You know, then in deeper life, you sit down to clap. They don't allow us to dance and stand up lest you move your body in a funny way. Though it looks very religious, but I thank God for those training because those are the things that can keep me seated. There are some people, they don't have, they have short attention span. They can sit for revival service. They can sit for prophetic service, but tell them, let's sit and study God's word. They, they, are, they are sensual Christians. They only walk with their ears, their eyes, their nose. It's all about their senses. And the people of the world, those charlatans have learned how to, how to tap into your flesh. Because they know that your flesh is always excited. If it's not about, I see a car, oh, I see a this, oh, I see a moon, oh, I see a this. They know how to excite your flesh. 
And that is why many people cannot sit under the word and learn what will make them test no more. When you see the topic that says thirst no more, we're not talking about being thirsty today and you drink and that is the end. No, in Judges 15, we saw that Samson, his thirst was, was quenched. Hallelujah. And these are principles that will help you so that your thirst will be quenched in the name of Jesus. Fasting is an instrument in prayer. It boosts our spiritual alignment. Hallelujah. It makes us spiritually sensitive. Fasting changes you. It doesn't change God. Praise God. So when we are fasting, we are not fasting so that God can hear us, so that God can... God is changing a lot of things in us. You cannot impress God by fasting. Are you hearing me, child of God? You cannot impress God. Fasting is not about you trying to impress God that, oh, I'm a superwoman, I'm a superman. I can fast for 100 days. Child of God, God does not eat food. Hallelujah. God does not drink water. Amen. God can, does not, um, 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 how do I put it into words? God is not hungry. Praise God. He's not looking for somebody to feed him. Hallelujah. What is God? God is looking for instruments whom he can bless. Hallelujah. So your fasting, oh, we did 40 days fasting. Oh, we did dry fasting 20 days. It doesn't impress God. It changes you, child of God. It changes your mind. It makes you spiritually sensitive. It is the master key for doing the impossible. Are you faced with an impossible situation? Give up food and pick up the word and begin to eat spiritual food. You know, sometimes when we even look at fasting in the natural realm, before you go for any operation, you hear the doctors say, don't eat 24 hours before coming for operation. Why? You see, when you want to go for any major uh, um, um, uh, um, um, tests, they tell you don't eat. We want to do um, uh, um, um, fasting, blood sugar. Why? Because they need your body to be in a state that can be receptive to the things they are looking for. So God has provided us as believers with tools that even the people of the world are making the most of it. And we, the children of God, that God has given those tools, we are not making use of it. What is fasting? Abstain us from food. You are subduing your flesh so that you can be, you can, your spirit man can be alert and open to God. You approach God with a purpose. Fasting has to be done with the right motive. It's not to prove a point to anybody. I believe that why God put us on this 30-day fast and three watches of the day in prayer is because there are some people that are, that are so thirsty and they want to know what is the secret of champions. How can I excel through the challenges of life? How can my life make sense? How can I have joy unlimited, joy unspeakable, full of glory? This is the secret of champions. When you're faced, we've seen men of God through the scriptures. When they were faced with impossible things, they fasted, they prayed. We saw Barnabas and Paul, when the teachers, the prophets, men of integrity, while they were praying and ministering to God, the Holy Ghost spoke. The Holy Ghost spoke because they all, all of them were receptive. Child of God, if anyone tells you that you can come to a level of spiritual um, um, tenacity, Without living a fasted life and a life of prayer, I'm telling you that, that that person is not telling you the truth. Many of these great men of God you see on TV, you see ministering, they, in their secret places, they have, what we are doing now, they have done it regularly. So now they're on another level. So don't go and compare yourself with them because in spiritual things, there are levels, there are precepts, there are, there are growth. Some of them have gone hungry without food because of their hunger for souls. Have you ever been hungry for souls? So much that you can't eat. All you are thinking of is divine. Lord, how, how, how can your kingdom be populated? I remember when I was in my, in my former church, I would spend all night asking the Holy Ghost for strategies for church growth, for increase, for soul winning. I would think, I remember even for face of joy, and some of you that are part of us, you would see me in Barclays Bank. Praise God. 
You will see me in Barclays, but I was the first Christian to be allowed to play Christian music in a bank. And when I would pack, come with my um, with my speaker, I came with our charity things. I was winning so so much that somebody asked me, "How did the bank allow you?" To come in here, you're singing worship songs. We had Sinatch, name me, different kinds of musicians. And while people were queuing up, waiting to go and, and, and use them and, 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 and meet the tellers and all that, they were listening to wonderful music. I had Sinatch on. I put on some Michael Bolton, all this sweet, beautiful music. And people will walk up to us and will share the gospel. Because I sit back and there is a hunger in my soul for souls. There is a hunger that lets no man perish. Do you want to stop being thirsty? Engage in spiritual matters. Engage in fasting. Engage in the place of prayer. I remember I shared with you my seven-year-old fast till 12 noon. Yes. Because when I was growing up, that was how I was raised in my father's house. Every Tuesday is fasting. You must fast. Till 12, you go to school in the morning without food. These things are things that shape the life of a believer. Because let me tell you, let nobody deceive you, child of God. There are trials you will go through. There are storms you will go through. There are rivers you would have to swim through. But if you're a person who understands spiritual matters, you will overcome each and every one of them easily because you stand with God. You will overcome the challenges of life if you learn spiritual principles. You will not be tossed here and there. You will not be unstable like water. Because why? You are engaging in spiritual matters. Such that even when you see a challenge, you know that this is something I will surely overcome. Hallelujah. So it is not an end. Fasting is not an end. To a means, but it is an it is a tool, it is something God has given us to stretch us in the place of seeking his face, of knowing him for who he is, for of knowing his power, of being able to identify with the things he has identified with. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Because fasting will stimulate your spiritual faculty, you become alert. I don't think the level of revelations I've received in the past 24 days, I'm telling you, we are coming out in a different way. Why? Because we have engaged in spiritual matters. Fasting will help trigger your faith. Amen. Such that powers of darkness cannot stand you. When you enter a realm of fasting and prayer, falsehood, bad people, negative people, they disappear. You will see they will not call your phone. You will see they will not, uh, uh, they can't even come close to you. Because why? There is a fire that is burning in you. God begins to separate the shaft from the wheat. Hallelujah. When can you fast? Anytime. God gave us this as an annual fast. And to the glory of God, we're in our fourth year. We know that the fifth year is a year, is it will be a year of grace. And God will even do, will do more. We see in the book of Isaiah 58, I want to read it very quickly concerning fasting so that you can be focused. Don't listen to those that will tell you don't fast. Don't listen to those that will tell you Jesus has paid all the price. You don't need to do anything. Let me tell you, they don't tell you what they do. They don't tell you this. They want you to always be dependent on them. They want you to always not have that spiritual tenacity to fight the battles of life. They want you to be so incompetent such that when matters you should climb and jump over appear, you always be looking for who can I call to pray? Who can I this? Who can I? But when you learn how to fast and pray, you settle that matter with God. The Bible says, hallelujah. Why, what is fasting? Let's look at Isaiah 58. Amen. Verse 6. And it says, And it's, is, this, is it a fast which I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul. Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and, out, and ashes? Would you call this a fast? And an acceptable day of the Lord, that is when people fast according to the flesh. 
Is this not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness? Hallelujah. So what is fasting? God wants to lose the bonds of wickedness. To undo heavy burdens. Let me tell you, there are levels of burdens that people carry. When you stand in the gap as one who has fasted, God uses you. You know how to undo a shoelace. When you have a shoelace tied to your feet, no matter the fact that the shoe is your size, the shoelace that is tied up to your feet will not let you remove those shoes. But fasting helps you to undo those heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free. So when you fast, you are also interceding and standing in the gap for others. Fasting is not just for you, but it's also for you to stand in the gap for others. And the Bible says, is it not to share your bread with the hungry? And that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Hallelujah. So the kind of fast that God finds acceptable, the kind of fast that God has chosen is a fast where you are interceding. Praise God. Where you are what? Standing in the gap for yourself and for others. Hallelujah. The Bible says to undo heavy burdens, not just yours, but many who are burdened. And to let the oppressed go free. So as you are fasting and you are praying, you are causing those who are oppressed to be delivered. And it's also a time to give. Praise the Lord. Fasting is a time to give to the poor, to the less privileged, to those who have no food, to those who have no clothes. It is a time for you to help the less privileged. Hallelujah. To give your bread, to cook, and give those who don't have. That is what fasting is also about. That food you are meant to eat, give it to somebody else. Hallelujah. You don't want to thirst anymore. These are the secrets. Hallelujah. To clothe people with your clothes that are left over. Give it out to charity. Go out to the motherless and the less privileged and support them. Hallelujah. The Bible says when you fast, you don't want to thirst anymore. The secret is in fasting. Verse 8 says, then your light shall break forth like the morning. Can you see that? Your healing shall spring forth speedily. Can you hear that? And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Can you see what happens when you fast? Can you see what happens when you intercede? Can you see what happens when you help the less privileged? These are the secrets of champions. These are the secrets for you not to thirst anymore. These are the secrets that separate you from those that wobble and those that stand. These are the secrets. The Bible says, then you shall call and the Lord will what? Answer. You shall cry and he shall say, here I am. Child of God, some people want verse 9, but they don't want verse 6. <laughs> they don't want verse 7 they don't even they only want verse 8 and verse 9 ah your light shall break forth hallelujah your healing shall spring forth hallelujah your righteousness shall go before you praise the lord but what is the, requ the, requ the requisite you have to give you have to go and win souls you have to help the less privileged you have to pray you have to intercede. Listen, the word of God is a word is a is 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 run by principles. And I pray that people would catch this principle. The Bible says, narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. Narrow is the way that would cause you never to thirst anymore. These things, if you do it and engage it, I'm here to tell you, child of God, that you will thirst no more. We saw Samson cry out to God and his thirst was permanently 
dealt with. You and I can do the same. You and I, if we engage with God, we will thirst no more. You and I, if we engage in the place of seeking the face of God, true fasting, child of God, your light shall break forth. Your healing shall spring forth. Your righteousness shall go before you. And the glory of the Lord, <laughs> that means behind you, light, glory, the expression of God comes alongside with you. And then you will call on the Lord. Those that engage in intercession, in fasting, in prayer, they don't, anytime they call upon the Lord, God hears. When the, any tear comes down their eyes, God says, here I am. Child of God, isn't that an amazing place to be in, in your walk with God? Isn't that an amazing place to be when you seek the face of God? That when you call upon his name, he answers you. When you cry out to him, he opens those doors to you. What is the secret? Engaging God. Engaging his principles. I pray for you and I pray for myself. That in the name that is above every name. That you and I will live lives that count. That our lives will be lives that we move from one level of glory. Preaching the gospel. Winning souls for Jesus. Praying and standing in the gap for others. Causing others to come to the knowledge of Christ Jesus. That we arise and we shine. Not for ourselves, but for many to come. Turn away from sin and come to the knowledge of Jesus. That the oppressed will go free. That heavy burdens are being undone. As you look up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Child of God, I'm here to tell you that you will thirst no more. You will thirst no more. This is what engages children of God from never being thirsty. Being people that engage in spiritual matters. When you engage in spiritual matters, God causes your life to move from a level of glory to the next level. My prayer for you again is that may God open your eyes to recognize the days we are in. The, the terrible times that we are in and to be and to be focused to look up to Jesus alone and alone many are running this race carelessly many are running this this race just as they like many are running this race without reverence to God many are running this race without any fear of God many are running this race not knowing that a day will come where you and I will give account to God on what he has made available for you and I and how did we use it how did you use the gifts God gave you how did you engage God gave you time to pray did you pray for anyone God gave you time to study his word and to know from his word that he has released gates of healing, deliverance upon your life. How many have you delivered? How many have you prayed for and their healing took place? How many have you set free from the captivity of darkness? These are the, the gifts God gave you without repentance. My prayer for you and my prayer for myself is that on the day the world is called yonder, we shall not be called wicked servants, but we shall hear those words. Thou good and faithful servant that servant that looks out for the things of god that we will leave every form of compl com com complacency and look unto jesus and our thirst will be permanently destroyed and we will be flourishing drinking from the milk from from the from the fruit of heaven our wilderness will become fruitful field and the nations of the world will come to the knowledge of jesus i want you to pray for yourself and pray uh, let us pray say father I, I, I decree over my life as I follow spiritual principles I will thirst no more I will thirst no more as I follow the principles of your word in the place of prayer as I follow the principles of your word in the place of intercession as I follow the principles of your word in looking after the poor and the less privileged as I follow the principle of your word and engage in fasting as I follow the principle of your word and do what your spirit orders my life to do. I decree I will thirst
first no more. Before I cry, you will hear me. When I call you, you will answer. When I cry, Father, you will say, here I am. Father, I thank you because right now in the name of Jesus, every thirst around me is disappeared. I am drinking from the, from the, from the word of God. The word of God is filling my life. The word of God is causing my life to move from one level of grace to another to greater grace. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. We are going to pray. Today is day 24. I want us to pray for prayer jumpstart. Let me tell you, this is the vision of the Holy Spirit. The Lord brought the vision. The Lord brought the name. And the same power of God that brought this will uphold it. I want you to say, Father, let prayer jumpstart and the school of evangelism be your tool to reach the world and bring solution in Jesus' name. Let's pray that through this medium that people will come to the knowledge of God that people will give their lives to Jesus that people will come to understand who the Lord God is that people will come to serve God in truth and in holiness father let this platform be a platform of your spirit let this platform be a soul winning platform where lives are transformed where people pick up the mantle of what you have put inside of them and run with it in the name of Jesus so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Say, Father, use your word to transform, to transform our lives such that the application of your word begins to change our destiny. Say, Father, let lives, let your, let your word, the application of your word in our life, let it begin to change all that concerns us. Let it become fire in our bones. Let the power of your word become fire in our bones. In the name of Jesus, say, Lord, let let prayer lives be revived through prayer jumpstart and school of evangelism. Father, as many that will connect with this program, whether on Facebook, on YouTube, or, or wherever, Father, we decree that let them receive a revival. Samson was revived when his thirst quenched. Lord, we pray that let the prayer lives of men and women, let it be revived on this altar in the name of Jesus. Father, that through this place, to this place you have called your own. Let it be a citadel of men and women coming to serve you, to pray, to seek your face. In Jesus' anointed name we pray. Amen. Child of God, I want you to lift up whatever that is in your life. Whatever you want God to change in your life. This is your hour. The Bible says, thirst no more. Begin to tell the Lord, Father, in this area, I decree I will thirst no more. What is that area in your life? Open your mouth, begin to speak to the Lord. Father, I will thirst no more. By your spirit, I will thirst no more. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's begin to, to thank the Lord for his word that has come forth. Say, Father, we bless you. We thank you for the power in your word. Your word that gives light. Your word that gives understanding. Father, we, we thank you. Because today, we are, we, every thirst is, is gone. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for filling us up by your spirit. We thank you for filling our spirit, man, for filling our bodies, for filling us up today, day 24. We thank you, God, for how far you have brought us. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Say, Father. I thank you because even as I've sought you and I've found you, I decree that I will not lose what you have taught me in this season. I will not lose what you have you have taught me this season. This is the season where I will thirst no more. Father, I thank you because clarity is coming my way. Clarity is coming to my mind. Clarity of what to do is coming my way. Somebody tell the Lord, I will not be devoid of information. I will not be devoid of 
understanding, of knowledge, of wisdom. When the Bible says thirst no more, that means every area of your life is not permitted to be thirsty. Every area of your life is not permitted to go without knowing what to do. Say, Lord, I thank you because the wisdom of God is at work in my life. The wisdom of God is causing me to make changes, to grow spiritually. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Spirit of God, everything that looks like a circumstance, everywhere they are thirsty. Father, I speak in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command that right now, let there be abundance of rain. In that circumstance, in that situation they are going through, I speak abundance in the name of Jesus. I speak life in the name of Jesus. The same power that revived Samuel when he was thirsty. Father, I speak revival to every dead area of their life. Every area that, de- that, has, that is dead right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I speak life. I speak life. Life into their children. Life into their career. Life into their ministry. Life into their marriages. Life into their home. Father, I forbid whatever you ha- they have put in your hands to die. Father, by your spirit, let there be a revival. Father, that which men has predicted as dead. In the name of Jesus, I speak life. I call forth life to every death situation. Father, I call forth life to everything that is that is dried up in their life. I speak fruitfulness right now by the power of the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the living God. I say to the four corners of the earth, whatever that has brought about dryness in their life, right now I command in the name of Jesus, let that dry ground be uprooted and let them right now in the name of Jesus, let that field become fruitful. Let that wilderness become fruitful. Father, I speak revival to every death situation. I speak revival by the power of the Holy Ghost. I speak revival in the name of Jesus. Father, I command everything that is dead around them, leave in the name of Jesus. I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. I command right now, be revived. Be revived. Be revived. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Child of God, I'm going to leave you with this scripture. The Bible says in Lamentations 3, 26, it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Child of God, as as the Lord has said, thirst no more. And you have agreed to the word of the Lord that says, thirst no more. It is good that you wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Wait on him, he will not disappoint you. As you are as you are applying the spiritual principles that we have spoken about today, child of God, wait patiently for God. Wait quietly, right in your face. God of suddenly, God of divine compensation, God that does wonders, God that does miracles that are too numerous for any to, 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 to fathom, that God will remember you for good in the name of Jesus. So Lord, we thank you for this hour. I thank you for those that are watching. I thank you for those that have connected on on Instagram, on Facebook. I thank you for every man, every woman that that, that you have brought on this platform. Lord, I pray that you bless them. I pray that whatever that they've prayed about today, may they be met with divine answers in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for their lives. I thank you for sustaining them. Father, let your name and your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. I will not end this broadcast without giving you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. If you're watching right now and you're not yet born again, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I confess that I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me. Jesus, I believe you died and on the third day you rose again for me. Come into my heart. I accept you today as my Lord and personal Savior. Holy Spirit of God, breathe upon me. 
teach me the ways of God, that my life will move from glory to glory. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just said this prayer, congratulations. Welcome into the body of Christ. Welcome, you are now born again. I pray for you that the power of God that brought you into the kingdom will keep you, uphold you, even unto the second coming of Jesus. I want to send you this book, Prayer Jumpstart. So send me an email on prayerjumpstart at gmail.com or better still, you can still go to my website www.ezineijoma.com you can send me a message at info at .com. let us know how this message has changed your life let us know what god has done in your life and i believe that god himself will uphold you and keep you this book will teach you about prayer rudiments of prayer peradventure you're born again you can order this book via amazon it will help you it has 30 days prayer manual that will help you in the place of prayer and i pray for you that your prayer altar will continue to go from greater fire to greater fire no power will quench it but it will keep burning the, your altar of prayer will keep burning in the name of jesus god bless you and i'll see you tomorrow day 25 to the glory of god five more days we are in our countdown season and god will continually count blessings to your life in the name of jesus god bless you i remain god's servant apostle Isn't it Ichioma of Face of Joy International Ministries, London? May God bless you and may God cause his face to continually shine on you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I just want us to worship God with this song. Amen. And I know that his faithfulness will uphold you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Oh my shame. The reason to worship enough. Because of what Jesus has done. Oh my sin. Forgiven. Fucking hey. No more shame. No more fear. My past is over. It's over. 